first of all. Um, somebody may want to tell their story to the Royal Commission. Does their story become public? And um, who has access to that story? In relation to the story that is told in the private session, it is confidential um, and the story is never revealed to any person outside of the Royal Commission um, with two exceptions. The one exception is where the person consents to that story being told, for example, for the purposes of a case study and ultimately provides evidence in a case study. So, we might say that we're interested in looking at this particular facility for deaf children. Um, we might go back to the people that have spoken to us about that service and we might say, are they prepared to tell their story um, in a public way? They have the absolute right to say yes or no. No ifs and no buts. It's their story, not ours. They control it. That only happens where we go to run a case study. Um, the second is where there is an imminent risk of, to a child in existence at the time. So, for example, if a person came forward with a story in relation to a teacher that was currently a teacher in the government or non-government education system, um, we, would, we would report that matter. But they're the only two circumstances. One is with consent and the second is in relation to that. What we have done, however, is we've sought the consent of people in the private sessions to be able to tell their story in a way that does not identify them <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or the institution. So in the report, the um, interim report that was released in July of this year that I referred to previously, over 150 stories are contained in the second volume. And those stories are true stories. All of them are true. None of them are made up. They are all stories that have been told to us in the private sessions where the individual has agreed to it and every name, including of the institution, the location and of all parties have been changed. So they are snapshots, they are summaries of the stories and people are entitled to say, no, I don't want my story used in that way or they can say, yes, I'm happy for it to be used in a way provided nothing will identify me. So that's the other part of the way we tell the story. But in terms of the actual confidential nature of the story that you tell us, it is exactly what it is. The law prohibits anybody from disclosing that story um, and nobody can disclose what took place in the private session. Um, that doesn't stop the person that's come forward to tell their story to the world, but not what took place in the private session. They can't reveal um, what took place in the private session and we can't reveal, other than in the way that I've described, which is in a totally de-identified way, um, and that's the way it occurs.